it used to be good enough to have just a, you know, an Oracle database sitting in, in the corner of your uh, data center. But today, uh, with uh, billions of customers around the world, uh, that ain't good enough anymore. You need to be able to put the database uh, closer to your customers, probably all over the world. And uh, we have uh, GenieDB today, who's going to uh, show us their new uh, uh, database system that's built on MySQL, but uh, is, is scalable around the world. And we're going to find out how right now. My name is Kerry Brees. I'm a CEO of GenieDB. I started out my life as an electrical engineer designing radar systems for the Navy at Lockheed Martin. Uh, did some other things, got in the financial industry, uh, did my own startup, uh, bootstrapped a financial services uh, company, kind of a technology back play, uh, and then threw my hat in the ring with uh, GenieDB after I, I sold my company in late 2010. Very cool. My dad worked at Lockheed, so we could spend an hour talking about that yeah. as well. But um, why, why do we, well, why do we need new kinds of database systems? And why are we seeing so much database innovation? Because you're like the 15th company lately that's uh, pitched me some sort of new database uh, system. There's an awful lot of innovation in the database world. Uh, that's true. You know, traditional databases were designed 30 years ago around the idea of a mainframe computer. Uh, never really designed for today's uh, distributed mobile users and cloud computing, uh, the massive scale that we have today. Uh, and so the, there is a lot of innovation, but it, it's a necessary um, process right now to really be able to serve kind of next generation applications. Things like Facebook and Google kind of led the way. Uh, now other application developers are coming up with similar uh, applications that, that need to serve global users and global base, uh, need to scale rapidly, need to meet uh, uh, increasing demands, and uh, yeah, innovation in the database layer is an exciting time to be a, a database startup. So when I, when I talked to Mark Zuckerberg uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. he was talking about sharding MySQL and making it so that he could uh, uh, put the database on more and more horizontal machines that would keep up with his load uh, needs. But today we are not just needing to horizontally scale that way, but also get closer to the customer so that they have uh, less latency to get uh, a packet back to their mobile phone. What makes you different than just a standard old MySQL inst instance? Yeah, great question. You know, a lot of people are talking about distribution today at the database layer. Uh, but there are, everyone talks about di distribution for scale, right? We know that. Uh, a lot of people are talking about distribution for scale. There are some other reasons to need distribution, though. Uh, redundancy is, is a big issue, right? You create replicas of the database in case you have a server failure. Well, what if you have a data center failure or you have a database in the cloud and you have a cloud service interruption or, or failure or maintenance window? Now you got to start thinking about distributing not just in a single data center, but across multiple data centers or multiple cloud providers. So high availability and fault tolerance is a, a big reason for distribution, not just scale. Uh, and another reason is the one you mentioned earlier, but uh, reducing latency to users no matter where they are. If you have users sitting in Europe or in uh, Asia and they're using your application, if you have a database sitting in a single data center in North America, the users can experience all that ping time and latency so every time they interact with the data. So uh, another reason for distribution across wide areas, across geographies, uh, is to reduce latency to end users, and that's that's one of the things we're really focused on. We're we're all about geo distribution. We also see our, uh, that there's an increasing number of choices for people, uh, for companies in choosing their database. Why, why stick with MySQL? Why not go with Mongo or some uh, in-memory database that you know newfangled uh, NoSQL database? You know, when the founders uh, originally came up with the ideas around GDDB, we wanted to solve the problem of geo distribution at the database layer. Uh, some of the NoSQL solutions were, were coming onto the scene around that time, and we thought that uh, NoSQL is great for a lot of use cases. Um, there's no doubt about it, but it's not a, a one case, a one use fits all. So we wanted to build a relational database that has the, the properties of geographical distribution that a lot of the NoSQL flavors have. Uh, and that's really been our, our mission from day one and kind of our vision. We think the world um, uh, really likes SQL and relational database. It's a great way to interact with data. Uh, MySQL has a huge install base. It's an open source solution, so it was something we could get our hands on. 
uh, great loyal following. Uh, a lot of web apps and cloud applications are, are using MySQL. I've heard estimates as high as 80% of today's cloud apps are based on MySQL. Uh, some of the biggest companies in the world that we have already mentioned, Facebook and Twitter, uh, PayPal, all use MySQL. So it's a, it's a great database. Uh, but MySQL out of the box doesn't really handle geodistribution the way, the way we're describing. And so that's really what we wanted to, to tackle. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I was sitting next to the data scientist for Nordstrom's, and she's like, "Oh, I, I'm using one of these newfangled uh, databases as a service. I think she she was using Amazon's. Why not go that direction? Why not let somebody else uh, handle it all for you, and you just call up the database and, and let somebody else?" deal with the scale and the uh, replication around the world? Well, we actually uh, have built our solution into a database as a service framework like Amazon RDS. Amazon RDS, though, is using out of the box MySQL, uh, which is great and can fit a lot of people's needs. But if you really want that additional uh, protection of high availability and fault tolerance that you get with geodistribution, if you want to reduce latency to users around the world, that's where GenieDB comes in. So we're like RDS, but we're on steroids. It's RDS on steroids for, for big geodistribution deployments. And what's the cost difference between uh, that kind of approach or, or any approach and, and what you're doing? Uh, for now, we're priced exactly the same as Amazon RDS. Okay. And can I run it on my own data center or do I have to run it in a cloud service like Amazon or Rackspace Cloud? Currently, we offer it on public cloud uh, solutions. Uh, we currently have uh, Amazon, Rackspace, and Google Cloud. We're integrating uh, some uh, additional cloud providers. Uh, SoftLayer is coming up. There'll be an announcement about that soon. Uh, probably tomorrow, uh, and a couple others. Azure is, of course, on our on our radar screen. We're working towards that. Uh, we do have a plan to get DigitalOcean as well, um, and so we intend to cover you know all the public cloud uh, solutions that are out there, and then GenieDB can run on top of it. Yeah, um, let's see the, the what it looks like to, the, on the UI and how simple it is to set, set great. it up and great. give developers a chance to see what it looks like. Great, so uh, I'll just show you our management console. This is available, by the way, for uh, right from our website. Um, anyone can just put in a, an email address and can come in and launch a cluster. We give you a free seven-day trial. Uh, what I've done now is I've launched a cluster right before we uh, started the cameras. To, it takes you know, five to 10 minutes to actually spin up all the instances. Uh, and so what you're looking at is our uh, management console in a, a three-node cluster. Uh, running GenieDB, and I've selected a uh, server in Rackspace Chicago data center, uh, Rackspace London, and Rackspace Hong Kong. So a truly geo-distributed uh, MySQL cluster. This is a, a seamless cluster to the, to the application. I'll talk about that a little bit. These are all master servers, so it's a true multi-master environment. There's no master-slave configuration to worry about. All servers can handle read-write uh, to the application. The great thing about that is if you lose a server uh, for, or a connection, the other servers can continue to serve your application. So you have you know, continuous availability. Um, and you also get that local database performance for users anywhere in Europe, in Hong Kong. Uh, one of the nice things about our console is if your application is experiencing additional traffic, you want to increase capacity, you can come in here on any of the nodes and very easily just with a click of a button, you can upgrade a node uh, right from the console here I have a one gigabyte standard in instance. You can go for at six, eight. Uh, I won't do that the second. I want to show you another option as well. If you decide you want to scale out further uh, and add a fourth node, you can do that as well. Uh, here's a, a drop down that shows all the cloud service providers that we currently have. You can pick any any flavor of Rackspace, any flavor of Amazon. Uh, any can, flavor. Can you of, use both at the same time? You can. You can indeed. So uh, if Amazon has a data center like in China. And, and Rackspace doesn't, you can use Amazon for a piece of it and use Rackspace. That's exactly for right, yeah. And, and some of our users uh, like to deploy GenieDB in that way. So it's not only multi regional and multi master, it's also multi cloud. Do you show the pricing differences between the clouds? We do indeed. Uh, there's a pricing tab they down here. Date because they change every 15 minutes. It seems like <laughs> we yeah we we matched uh, the recent pricing wars. Uh, yeah. So there is a pricing tab down here on our management console that lets the uh, user see how much each node is costing per month. And this price includes the GenieDB service as well as the cost of the instances themselves. We get those under our own account and pass that through to the end user. Very cool. uh, one of the other things I want to talk about, if I, if I may, is the, uh, we've built in a DNS layer into our database as a service solution. And so if you look down here at the bottom, there's a, a, a single DNS uh, endpoint right here that you can point your application to. And we're using uh, latency-based routing. 
So if your application uh, is pointed to this endpoint and there happens to be a server that goes out, it'll choose automatically the next closest server based oh, on really latency. Smart. And it's a 90 second uh, maximum failover rate right out of the box. So um, if a plane falls into like our Dallas data center, it'll automatically reroute around that? Exactly, and, and exactly, hands-free. We really wanted to have you know, an easy user experience for the, for the end user, for the developer, for the DBA, frankly. We had a truck one, one year hit our data center and take us down for a little while. So we're hardened against that, but a plane might take down the whole Well, thing. you know, things happen, <laughs> right? I mean, there's a Hurricane Sandy a couple of years ago, yeah. the East Coast storms, the winter storms can cause outages. Uh, you know, some cloud providers have, have known to have regional outages. It, it, it is an issue that people need to consider. Is there any competitor that does this kind of, you know, cross data center, uh, uh, database kind of thing? Uh, certainly no one from MySQL. We're the only ones that can uh, really have built a, a geo-distributed MySQL cluster. Um, NuoDB, if you, I'm sure you're yeah. familiar, they, they do We've some, the they, yeah, they, they do some geo-distribution, uh, their but own it, SQL. But that's not, that's not a, a MySQL database, that's a, a graph database, right? Correct, they, they rolled their own database from scratch, uh, and uh, then TransLattice is another company that, that does geo distribution. They use a Postgres implementation, but we're the only MySQL uh, solution out there. And again, it is MySQL. We've we've modified a storage engine inside of MySQL called GenieDB. So this isn't a MySQL transla translation layer or anything. It is MySQL. You can spin this up in minutes and point your app to it, and off you go. Very cool. So I don't have to change uh, my code. That let's say I already have MySQL running on so on something like a Amazon or a Rackspace. Yep. Uh, I don't have to change any of that code that uses those APIs. You don't have to change a single thing. You can connect just the way you connect to your your MySQL database now. The only thing you need to change is the storage engine. Make storage engine equal GenieDB, and we'll take care of the rest. Got it. Is there anything architecturally that a developer has to uh, maybe rethink when they go to a system like this? Or You know, it's a good question. Uh, certainly in a geo-distributed environment, uh, there are some considerations that you may not face if you're on a, on a, certainly on a single server or even a single data center environment. Uh, things like uh, we are an eventually consistent model. Uh, we don't do certifications for transactions across all nodes. We uh, commit the transaction at the local node and then replicate it across. Uh, we think uh, eventual consistency is really the right model for cloud. Yeah. Uh, some of the NoSQL solutions have kind of pioneered this area. And so we've adopted that into uh, MySQL. So it's an eventually consistent multi-master MySQL. So that certainly has some considerations at the application layer. We find most apps are extremely tolerant of that and, and function very well. Is this uh, good enough for a, tra a highly transactional app you know, that, that might want an asset approach? You know, we are working on our roadmap to uh, provide a capability of doing, uh, you know, a strong consistency for some subset of transactions or data types. We don't currently offer that. Uh, in a geo-distributed environment, you're not going to be able to do that with all the data without suffering the penalties of, of, of latency. Uh, so, but we do want to offer that for, for, some, for some situations when customers do want that. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Um, what else do I need to know as a, de as a developer is looking at my database choices? What, what would be the con of this? Why, would I, why wouldn't I go with a, a, a NoSQL approach or a, a, a more traditional MySQL? Well, you know, you talked a little bit about sharding in, in the early part of the program. Uh, currently, GenieDB is, is fully replicated, so every node is a full copy of the database. Uh, as such, we, we don't offer sharding out of the box. There are some, there are some MySQL sharding solutions on the market. Uh, that we can integrate where, with very easily and seamlessly. Uh, we're thinking about uh, maybe build, building our own type of sharding solution. So I would say if you're really looking for uh, uh, right scaling and, and scaling rights where you need to look at a sharding solution, certainly uh, you'd want to talk to the, one of the, the vendors that offer that kind of solution uh, and then talk to us for availability and low latency. Is, are you tracking the uh, average uh, performance of the machines that you're hosted on top of? Because you're, you're one of those vendors that's uh, hosted on Amazon and Google and Rackspace, so you probably have a good sense of which one's the fastest at the moment, because <laughs> that changes every year. Uh, absolutely, least. absolutely. And I, I should point out, we, don't yet, uh, we haven't yet integrated the, the newer Rackspace uh, SSD servers. We, we, are, we will be doing that shortly. Um, but certainly, we, we do monitor that. Uh, we expose to the user uh, CPU utilization, as you can see in the console we talked about before. Uh, we talk about, we, we track IOPS, and there's some more monitoring and, and other things that we're gonna start exposing as we go. Yeah. yeah. Is, do you warn people when uh, you're running out of database uh, space or that the underneath the, 
is filling up or, or that it's becoming uh, less cost effective than maybe another provider? It's up to the user today. They can monitor uh, using our, our management console, but we, we do see a need for kind of automated uh, provisioning and things. And all of our functions through the management console are exposed in an API. So the end user can certainly build all those solutions out. Very cool. Yeah. Um, tell me about a bit about the company. How is it funded and, and uh, how many people work there and what, what kind of team? Sure. So uh, founded in 2011, um, we are funded uh, with some local venture capitalists in Orange County. We're down in San Juan Capistrano, uh, home of the Swallows. Uh, we uh, uh, are affiliated with uh, a high-tech incubator called Frost Data Capital, uh, focused on big data and cloud computing space. Uh, we're backed by Miramar Ventures as a, one of our investment partners. Uh, Frost Ventures has their own uh, fund, as well as uh, uh, Hillcrest Partners. Uh, we're out raising some additional funding right now. Um, and uh, we went into production in uh, October of 2013. Uh, we've got dozens of production customers and we're ramping up 20% month over month. Uh, I'm really excited about our, our future. What have you learned about the world since building this company? Because you, you're one of the newer companies and you're trying to do something pretty aggressive that nobody else is doing. Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's an exciting time to be in the database world. There's, there's so many different uh, approaches and solutions. I, I do think it's, it's never going to be a one solution fits all. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to me from a kind of an engineering perspective about what's the right tool to use in the right instance. And I would, you know, encourage any kind of application developers or architects to really, you know, do their research and find out what's the right tool for the right use case and then make that selection. Very cool. Where do we l learn more about it? Uh, GenieDB.com. Again, free trial for seven days. All we need is your email address and uh, go check it out. Very cool. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate it.